don't do this one much. But Psalm 25, we're going to sing verse number one, then we're going to jump down to four, and then we're going to go to two. So just follow my lead. Psalm 25, starting in verse number one. Psalm 25. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Teach me thy path, show me the ways of the Lord. Teach me thy path, show me the ways of the Lord. Teach me thy path, show me the ways of the Lord. Teach me thy path. Do I lift up my soul unto thee, O Lord? Do I lift up my soul unto thee, O Lord? Do I lift up my soul unto thee, O Lord? Do I lift up my soul? Psalm 48, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 48, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. Psalm 48, verse number 1 and 2. Psalm 48, verse 1 and 2. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city. Now, obviously, this isn't something that is, uh, you know, 
We're going to uh, hold, hold your feet to the fire on you. Understand? This is a practical thing here. I don't want you to go away going, well, wait a minute, I've got to find out where I am on this list, right? Uh, so let's start off with uh, a word of prayer. And uh, let's just really kind of take it. I wouldn't want you to leave today not understanding where you fit. Because if you know where you fit, knowledge, right? If you know where you fit, you can then figure out where you go from here. Right. But if you're like, man, you, know, you first get shaved and you're like really on fire and everything, but you get a lot of heat without any knowledge, amen? Right? A lot yeah. of fire, but you don't even know what you're hot for yet. You right. just got a, a lot of energy about something, you know? So you got to kind of look at this thing and see how you progress. If you notice here, let's say you have a word. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for all things. And Lord, we humbly bow before you. And Lord, we humbly bow before the book this morning. It's our final authority. And if we're going to get anything today, it's going to be because the Holy Spirit that lives inside of each one of us guides us into all truth. So help us today, dear Lord. Help me as your humble messenger today to be able to give something out that will be practical for the people, your people, dear Lord. I love you and I thank you for all things and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started off by saying a Christian starts off as a babe or a baby. Amen. Amen. There's no getting around that yeah. thing, right? No matter the age, young or old. When, it, when trusting the Lord, you begin as a newborn babe, which simply means this. Some people get saved young. Others get saved older. So a man that is 60, you would go, well, surely he doesn't start off as a babe because he's got so much knowledge. That's worldly knowledge. Yeah. That's not spiritual. Amen? Yeah. So no, he starts off as a babe because you're what? Newborn. You're a born-again Christian. Right. Amen? The hated term. And you know what? The Bible clearly teaches, and my sister will tell you back in the day, know what you were called, Brother Jeff? Are you one of those born-agains? Yeah. You remember, Keith, you right? Huh, what are you, one of those born-agains? You want to know why? God had begun to move in the late 70s and the early 80s in such a way that there were people going, what's taking place? What are you, one of those born-agains? Wow. I like that testimony now. Back then, I used to feel a little bit weird by it. Man, Shady, you know what my answer was? Well, I'm Baptist. I did. Well, I'm Baptist. Because I felt like they were attacking me. Mm -hmm. As time went on, I understood what was really happening. The men that would say that weren't born again. Right. They weren't spiritually right. born. Right. They don't even see it in the scripture. They simply think by me believing something. All it takes is me believing this thing that Jesus was buried and that he uh, uh, was uh, raised from the dead. And if I believe this thing, I'm all set. So little kids, they get taught from the time they're born, much like the Catholics who take and sprinkle water, and they're taught, do you believe that, Johnny? I believe it, Mama. Good. You're six years old. Let's have a little prayer. We'll get you in the baptistry. Now you're sealed until the day of redemption. Okay. So now they go about their whole life going, well, I'm saved. I'm in prison. I'm all kinds of innocent. sin. I'm in the drugs. I'm in the sexual sin. But I prayed a prayer when I was six. Do you see the folly? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see that there's no new birth? Yeah. And do you see that when they come looking for help, what happens is the preacher simply says, Do you believe? Can you imagine the guy being honest and going, Are you kidding me? Do I believe? I will die for what that thing says, but it hasn't changed me. There's something wrong. Yeah. You must be born again. You must be born again. Yeah. Must be. Spiritually. Yeah. Made alive. Otherwise, you are a physical, walking death trap. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for your day. Waiting for your number to be punched. Period. The end. Yeah. Hopeless. Hopeless. Yeah. Hopeless. So we pick up and we're going to look at some scripture today. Knowledge, I said, is important. And to understand where you are is vital. So you can see where you need to go. Right. Amen? Yeah. So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse number 1. And let's see if we can't take and figure some. Look at. I'm not going to give you some man's principles on seven. We're going to look and see what the scripture says Amen. about being a hey Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. look. First Corinthians three one says, and I, Paul, says, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, huh, but as unto carnal, huh, even as unto babes in Christ. So babes in Christ are compared with carnal people. Yeah. Someone that is walking in the way of the world. Right. So to see a baby Christian and to see them do something that is carnal fits. Yeah. 
Now, when you get somebody been shaved for 25 years doing that stuff, and they're still a baby, you've got a problem. Right. Morphism. Right. I used to preach a message, if God could, you could see what you look like in the mirror, spiritually speaking, you might not look so good. You might look like the late night picture of the Ethiopian children when I was young, with the swelled out belly, and the dried up nose, and the buzzes flying around up there, and flies around their head. That's what you look like spiritually, and even, yeah. Yeah. reminds me of that girl up in New Hampshire, a woman, if her last name was Bishop. She had psychiatric problems. When they let her out of the hospital, they never told anybody. She made her way to New Hampshire where she lived and found an empty house. And every day for the next three to four months, she penned down everything she did, which included daily going to get apples that she would live off of until she could figure out what to do. It's basically the journal of a psychotic woman who believes God knows where she is and somebody's going to come and find her. But dare I say to you, she starved to death yeah. Yeah. and wrote it down day to day what took place till she finally said, I need my last apple. And then she lasts for 39 more days with no food and only snow to drink. She penned it all down. For the last day. Her last entry is I've now gone 39 days without any food. The dry heaving has stopped. The pain is unbelievable. But he knows where I am. Amen. See? There she was, starving to death. Her own people riding by on I-93, the house could be seen. Right. The house was empty and vacant, and the people that owned it had drove by and noticed a little plume of smoke coming out, but yet there was no electricity. So they made an uh, entry in and looked and couldn't see anybody had been there, and they leave and make a phone call, and they're told that it's natural gas, and if you have a, a, a pilot light on, there'll still be a little bit of gas. It kept the girl alive. She would sit on the little heater. Wow. But it was inevitable. She would die. Yeah. Why? Spiritually, spiritually speaking and physically, she couldn't make it. No. No food. That's the picture of the Christian that never reads their Bible. Yeah. That's the picture of the Christian that goes home on Sunday night and places their Bible up upon a place and they make sure that no dust gets on it, but they never open it up. Right. Spiritually speaking, you're anemic. Spiritually yeah. speaking, you're dying. Let me say this. If you fill yourself with worldly music, worldly talk radio, and all that business, you're still feeding yourself with junk food. Right. Yeah. yeah. You need to be filling yourself with spiritual food. Do you realize you can now go on YouTube and actually hear the messages from great preachers? You could sit and listen to them for hour upon hour. Imagine what you could learn if instead of following what the world has set it up for, when you laugh at people making mistakes and you look at people having horrendous problems, you could learn something. But instead, the good that could be taken from these things, right. be careful right. about it. Right. So, a newborn baby acting carnal, no problem. Not a problem for a newborn babe Christian to be carnal. You know the wonderful thing is, you don't have to stay a baby. Yeah. I was saved September 22nd, 1984. By June of 1986, I'm back in the prison I was saved out of state prison, and I'm back in there as a chaplain. I've already gone to all of my family and told them about Jesus Christ. I've traveled down to Florida to tell my best friend, Mike Collins, about Jesus Christ. I went anywhere I could to tell everybody that I loved that Jesus was real. I had no knowledge except he had did something to me and it made me different. I didn't know anything except I had been born again. I labeled myself. I knew something happened. I knew when I got up on my from my knees, I no longer was the same person. I don't, I'm not telling you I saw something. I'm telling you something happened in here. I was born again. Yeah. And I started off as a baby. But I only had to stay a baby as long as I wanted to. My sister will tell you, I was a young boy already, come home from prison, went in as a boy, but by the time I'm home two years, I'm wearing a suit and tie, and I'm walking, I'm going to church, and I'm trying to preach the gospel. Never been to Bible school yet. Why? I didn't want to be a baby. I wanted to know. I wanted to know. I wanted to know more about God. 
I want us to know a little more about the one that could take a broken heart and a broken spirit and mend it. I wanted to know who he was. I wanted to know everything I could. So what I did was get into the Bible. I had no other book because I didn't know about commentaries yet. I didn't know about Christian radio, so instead I went from listening to ACDC or one of those rock and roll bands to listening to Jim Croce. Are you with me? Are you following me? John Denver, Jim Croce from Alice Cooper and the Sex Pistols. I'm talking about a change. Yeah. I'll be born again. Nobody could deny it. You go, why? You never got mad? No, fist fights, pull guns out, all kinds of craziness. But something happened. See, I'm a baby. Yeah. yeah. I was beginning to grow. Things are beginning to change. But everybody starts off as a baby. I recognize that the Bible says here, it says, I, brother, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat. Oh, my. What an indictment. Mm. What an indictment. You should have been ready for meat, but I have to feed you milk. I don't like that. Do you? No. Do you like it if I get up here and instead of talking about the deep things of God on a Wednesday night, I give you the ABCs of Christianity? But sometimes you need that when you're a babe in Christ. Yep. Amen. Amen. You need to know some things. And now, uh, how about one more verse there and we'll move. The next one is 1 Peter 2. 2. Everyone memorize that one, right? As newborn babes, what? Desire the sincere milk of the word. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Yeah. See, I memorized that a long time ago. Huh? I memorized it. I put it into my bank of memory up here. And I said, I want to live by that thing. As a newborn babe, desire the sincere, the pure breast milk of your mother. Not watered down. Not taking from the pure milk of the word and adding a bunch of milk to right. it. And a bunch of outside stuff to it, rather. And watering the milk down. You know how they take whole milk and turn it into 2%? Yeah. Whole milk gets old, they bring it back and they redo it and it becomes 2% milk. Yeah. Then they take the 2% milk when it comes back and they put it back through and it becomes 1% milk. And then when you're done with that, you're going to become skim milk. Yeah. All started off as whole milk. It's watered down. You want your baby getting big? You want your boy getting strong when they're young and the bones to get hard? Guess what? You need some milk. Mm -hmm. Care what the government tells you about not drinking milk when they're mad at the farmers and they want right. to shut the farmers back in the 70s? I'm a young man coming up. I grew, I grew up when Auburn was full of farms. And you can ride down in Auburn and see cows mooing and milking cows out there. Yeah. All the milk we drank was local milk. Miola's milk right there in West Boylston. Gibson right there. How about that other one with that L that he closed down up there in Shrewsbury? Lundgren and Janitis. Say, how do you know that? Because they delivered milk to your stinking house. Right. Milk's important for a baby. Yeah. For a baby. You get a little older, you need meat. Little Joe, we went from milk to formula to the crushed up stuff, to now he sits eating pizza pie with everybody else, making sure that slice is mine. I know, there's one, two, three, four of us, eight slices, two, 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 two. I know how this plays out. So, <clears throat> let's see what I wrote to you. A baby or a babe needs constant attention. Watch. Must be watched. If left to itself, it will die. Am I lying? No, you're right. Right, a baby left alone, yeah. Won't make it, Jay. Yeah. You put the baby outside, you leave it outside, don't hope somebody finds it. Guess what? If nobody finds it, it dies. It freezes yeah. to death. Right. It can't get up and walk away. It can't crawl. It is helpless. That's a baby. Now watch. Uh, he needs uh, everything. He can't even tell anyone when he's hungry, thirsty, wet, cold, hot, except through crying, yelling. So someone needs to know. Watch this. Someone needs to know what is going on with the baby at all times. I used to be involved at a church that the nursery had somewhere around 40 to 50 kids coming in. They literally had feeding times listed. Parents would be brought in and they would be taught that you have to make sure your child was fed before you brought them. But we did have a feeding room. And if the mother was a nursing mother, what would happen is there would be a list up there that would say, Joe Rizzuti Jr. needs to be fed at 1045. And the 10 to 15 infants that were at, I said infants at the church would be cared for, be nursed, would be diaper changed, all the way till the second shift came in, and then they'd look and go, Joby was fed, he'll now need to be 
changed. You see what I'm talking about? Someone needs to know what's going on with the baby. Mm -hmm. The baby can't go in 10 minutes, I'm going to be hungry. In 30 minutes, I'm going to poop. And then I'm going to need to be changed. He can't do any of that. So when the baby comes into the church house and says to me, I've only been saved six months, and then wants to start talking deep doctrine, I know something's wrong. You've got a baby on steroids. You've got a genetically altered baby. There's something amiss. Wondering when he's coming back when you don't even know for sure if you're saved. Because watch what happens as we grow. Watch the next step. I don't want to bang on the baby thing. Because uh, I believe most of you here aren't babies in Christ. I think some of you are stunted, but I don't think that you're babies in Christ. I think you know what to do, so I'll see where you fit. What's our next one? Little child. Go to 1 John 2, 11. A little child. Now, I want you to picture someone that doesn't need attention all the time in the sense of can't let you know what's going on or anything, but still need somebody watching out over. Do you ever watch me with my grandson? I'm going to give you ladies a trick. You do what you want with it. You won't do it because you're female. You break the ball. You break babies' wills. You want to make them hug you and love you and cuddle you. You want to hold them. You want them, not in a bad way, but you want them to do what you want. And you don't want them to just be themselves and allow them to go down and you stay a foot or two behind them. And your enjoyment becomes, rather than you picking them up and holding them and dictating what they do, you simply follow wherever they go to make sure they don't get into anything. And guaranteed, as soon as they want to be held, it'll be by the person that didn't try to break them. Are you following me? So he still needs to be watched. He still needs to be cared for. But now, instead of taking it, you can take your and take a few steps. Now, if you're a little child, watch what the Bible says about this little child. And uh, look at 1 John 2, 11. Because the funny thing is, in every verse we'll look at, you'll see the revelation God gave you through the scripture. You don't need to get James Dobson's latest book on child rearing. When I came up, James Stormer's book, remember? Uh, uh, Growing Up God's Way. Uh, excellent book. Uh, excellent book by, uh, probably still a great book, on rearing children. Dr. John Stormer. All right? But this isn't talking about this kind of thing. This is talking about spiritually speaking. So you're a little child in second, uh, First John chapter 2 and verse number 11. Let's read that. And it says this. It says, but he that hateth his brother. Oops, sorry. First John 2, 11. Uh, okay, yes, there it is. I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Now watch this. A little child here, spiritually speaking, learns how to handle his sin issue. He knows this doesn't look like the verse I want. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't the verse that I want. I wrote the wrong verse down here. Uh, I'm looking for the one that talks about him being your advocate. Uh, so the little child is someone who begins to learn about their sin issue. They learn that they've got somebody that they can go to. They learn that Jesus Christ is their mediator. If you find the verse that says he's your advocate, that's the one I'm looking for. And uh, so what happens is you're no longer a baby. Now what happens is when you sin, you recognize, I can get this thing squared away. All I have to do is go to my advocate. You know what an advocate is? A defense attorney. First one, Pastor, thank you. It's first John 2, 1. Thank you. That's, I, I knew if we could get to the verse. There it is. My little children, these things I write unto you, watch, that ye sin not. Now watch. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. The baby couldn't understand that. Amen. The baby wasn't even ready for that yet. The baby needed to still be guided all the way along. Yeah. The little child here begins to learn, I have an advocate with the Father. I don't need to go to the preacher and confess my sins. I don't need to go to a little box and confess my sins to a man. I've got an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Where it stops. Yeah. You don't get to jump past that. No. No. See, if you don't know how to fix your sin problem, you're never going to grow. You'll stay as a little child. And I'm going to show you that. You watch. You don't get victory to become a young man or woman. The little child doesn't know how to overcome the wicked one yet. There's nothing worse than a baby wanting to start fighting with a grown-up. Right. Yeah. 
think it's a little infant going to take on the wicked one? You think a little child is going to take on the wicked one? No. Watch and see how it plays out. Because the babe can't, the little child can't, and the children can't. That's your infant, that's your two years old to about seven years old, and then all the way up to 12, 13 years old. Jesus was 12 years old when he was called a child when he went to the temple. Why is that there? So you understand. Okay, I'm growing from a baby in Christ to a young toddler in Christ yeah. up to a teenager in Christ. Listen, I knew teenagers that could fight pretty good. And I was one. At about 15 years old, I would fight grown men. But there was the day I fought a grown man and I realized there was a big difference between a 162-pound 15-year-old and a 210-pound 32-year-old. I learned because he picked me up off of my feet, swung me around, headbutted me in my face, knocked my bottom tooth out in about a half a second. Yeah. And swung me like a rag dog in the middle of the street, our main street. Only reason I didn't get beat up that bad was that back in the day we used to carry a thing called a buck knife. Yeah. And I got that buck knife to wear and you could take him out and I pulled that thing out and he said, come on kid, you're doing good, put that away. And I'm there bleeding everywhere. By the way, I didn't start the fight. Hey, Joe Sullivan gave a kid a middle finger at a car. And the kid jumped out of the car and said, one of you is the fight. So I fought. But I'm telling you something, a little boy can't do the job of a man. Right. So when you've got a babe trying to be victorious in his battles and he doesn't, I understand that. When you get a little child that doesn't, I understand that. But here we go and he tells you, you now as a little children, you will learn about your sin. And when you sin, you learn you have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus. So now you're not the little baby needing the milk. You're learning about relationship. But it's not here. It's between you and God. It's a spiritual thing. Are you there yet? Are you there where you understand something? When you sin, if it says when and if, and you might as well say it, you will sin. Yeah. If you don't go to your Lord Jesus Christ and have him go and take care of that thing for you, you'll be walking around learning to live yeah. carrying sin yeah. with you. The temple will be dirty, and you'll be like, well, I'm just used to it. Yeah. I live this way. No. I read the Bible on Sunday and watch pornography on Monday. Yeah. And you learn to live with it. I'm a preacher on Sunday, but then I'm a ruthless businessman on Monday. Lie, cheat, and steal. No, it don't fit. No. Still a babe in Christ. Right. Still a babe in Christ. You can act carnal when you're a baby. Yeah. You go, how long? I don't know. I was preaching in a, in a year and a half. So you tell me how long. Have you read the Bible yet through once? How long are you going to be before you read the Bible? How many years will it be you're saved before you ever make it through the Bible? And then you go, well, I know all I need to know about God. I don't know about that. All right. A little child here, spiritually speaking, learns how to handle his sin issues. He gets it. He knows if and when he sins, he has an advocate, a go-between. Someone who will stand up for him like a defense attorney does in court. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Just like the small children know the right from wrong and what mom and dad permit without consequence, spiritually, the little child does. Now, here's the thing. You need to understand something. As a small child, you get understanding right and wrong. Your parents still let you make the decision. Johnny don't touch that. They don't stand there and watch to see if Johnny touches it. Yeah. Johnny may very well touch it. The question is, is there a consequence? If mom and dad raised them with no consequences, they may begin to think that their heavenly father allows that stuff with no consequences. Right. Right. Thus you'll stay like a little child. And I know pastors that are still little children. Yeah. They believe they can lie, cheat, and steal, and it'll all be all right. It don't work that no. way. No. You go, he's a pastor. He can't be a baby. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You've got, you've got a babe, you've got the little child, and then Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 through 28. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So now when you get to this age, guess what you're going to understand? You're going to learn about your heritage. You're going to learn that you worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that your God is the God of the Old Testament. That's what you're going to learn. And you're going to grab a hold of that thing and you're going to be all right with it. Then you're going to start learning that you're a joint heir. That you've got the promises of God and they're yours. You've got special promises from God to you as the Gentile church. Amen. See, we're growing now. Yeah. We're growing now. We're growing now. People might not see it, but you're learning. You're learning to know who you are in Christ. You're learning to realize something. Though the world, though your family, though whoever might not think much of you, God does. He yeah. counts you as son. Yeah. And if you think that's little, then you're ignorant. You need to learn something. No matter what man thinks about you, God is the one you need to be concerned about. Yeah. I'm a son of God. Yeah. I'm not the son of God. I said, I'm a, a son of God. Yeah, yeah. One of millions. Yeah. I'm growing now. I've got it. I know who I am. I know where I need to follow. I need to go back in that Bible all the way to Abraham. I need to see that promise. I need to understand that thing. Then I won't hate the Jew. Right. See, the babe can still have a little bit of problems with the Jew. Huh? These pastors hanging on the Jew. Mm -hmm. The babes in Christ. Yep. Don't understand it yet. Yep. Can't get it. Infantile. Yeah. But they're trying to feed the meat to everybody. <laughs> Listen. That verse right there tells us that we will what? We will have grasped where we come from. We won't be hating the Jew. We'll be thanking God for the Jew. Yeah. Amen. Well, I don't have much time. So we'll move on to the important one. How about 1 John 2.13? I'll talk about this one here a little bit already. This is that place that you might find yourself at right now. But you tell me if you did. You tell me if you did. I write unto you. Young man is where I want. Yeah, it's in here. I write unto you fathers. We'll go there in a minute. Because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you. Watch this. Young man. Why? Why are you writing to me? Because you have overcome the wicked one. Amen. When you become a young man in Christ, you learn to be able to say no yeah. to your stinking, rotten flesh yeah. that wants to run your daily life by overeating, over drinking, overthinking, overthinking, over everything. Yeah. Yeah. And underdoing when it comes to the spiritual. Right. Right. But the young man in Christ learns to have victory. Mm -hmm. You know how you get strong, sis? You get having a victory over something yeah. and you go my goodness did i just beat my biggest one have i not got violent in how many years now since i've laid my hand on somebody wow how about when the drug addict finally beats it and they really get the victory how about really understanding what's happened there they beat something that's killing five a day in massachusetts yeah all the glory to God. Five a day dying. I got something to say about that. If a person can find in Christ the ability to have overcome drug addiction, I say bully for them. You're overcoming. You're a young person in Christ now. You're becoming someone that we can count on. We can call on you to pray because we know you know how to get a hold of God because you've had a few victories in your life. You know what it's like to feel defeated and get back up. You know what it's like to lose a loved one and get back up. You know what it's like to have problems at home and keep going. You're learning! Yeah. But when you're a babe in Christ, it's okay that it's still hard, Con. When you're a little child, I'm not too concerned that you're not having great victories over minor things. But as the years progress, yeah. and I see the same things haunting, chasing, right. never letting go, and you're carrying that thing around with you, and as the years get older, you're like that old person, and now you're down like this, but all it really is, it's a bunch of junk, man. Yeah. A bunch of junk. You must begin to have victory so you can go, I'm growing. I'm growing. I know who I am. 
I know who I am. I know where I come from. I get it. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel. I get it. King David. I get it. All the way through the breaking down. Elijah must come before the Messiah comes. If you accept John the Baptist, he'll be there. I'm getting it. Yeah. But I got to get victory before I can become a young man. I got to be able to be able to overcome. How about this? We stop looking at things, going, I want to beat this thing in my life. Listen, if it's God, you ain't ready to fight the spiritual battle yet. You've got to first get rid of that one. Yeah. Then you can begin to fight the spiritual battle. It's your tongue. Yeah. That's a spiritual battle. Yeah. The book of James says the tongue is the smallest member, which really, we know, it's, it's anyway. But that little member has the ability, like a, a, a rudder on a boat, uh, to bring people certain ways. Yeah. But one of the victories you can have is over your tongue. Huh? Over your tongue. You stop provoking people. Yeah. You stop wanting the fight. I've seen growth in people. I've seen growth in the pastor's wife. Pastor's wife's been with me eight years in close contact. I've watched her grow. I've watched her overcome things in her life. I've watched the young pastor overcome things in his life that could have caused him to begin to stumble. I've watched some of you begin to grow, and then I watched the devil attack you. And I watch him come at you with all that he's got. And what happens is you end up like the kid in school that puts his head down in windmills. Yep. You know what happens to that kid? Someone like me stands back here and waits and goes bam, right in the face. Mm -hmm. And the windmills don't work. Now you find that out, you try it a few times. Mm -hmm. And you go to windmill, sounds like a great idea. I'll just put my head down and go like that. Surely I'll hit somebody, yeah. right? I'll just swing like that, right? And I'll kick. Yeah, you're not really fighting the battle. You're just swinging. Yeah. You've got to be ready. How are you going to fight if you don't know how to handle the tool? The right. sword of the spirit is the word of God. Amen. Your only thing that you have that will ever work is the word of God, and you can't wield it in your own flesh. It's the sword of the spirit. Right. Yeah. Right. Not the sword of the flesh. Right. Me right. just quoting a verse. Let me tell you something. I had a rough week. The pastor will tell you. I had a rough week. Rough week trying to put the radio program together. You know, all that comes with trying to put something out to the world and have them approve it. All that stuff. It's a rough food for me. You know, all of a sudden, about Thursday or so, I woke up and I said, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And I began to go, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And I pulled my feet over that bed about 4.45 and I got myself up and I took my dog out and I began to quote some more scripture looking up at the sky. And guess what? I had a breakthrough. I had a breakthrough. Because you know what? There's nothing worse than feeling hopeless and rejected. You can be able to defeat all kinds of carnality in your life and still have major issues holding you back from going full force for God. See the young man? He learns to get victory and then he begins to accomplish those victories because they strengthen him. So, and he feels those accomplishments. In other words, don't look and go, well, I can't feel good about, you know, having the victory over this thing. I surely can't stand up and say to anybody, you know, I've got victory over drugs. You know, I wouldn't want anyone to know it about me. Listen, let me tell you something. You're somebody's consolation somewhere. Yeah. Someone needs to hear you say something. And guess what? Some of you have been able to have victory over things and then go back in. And, and now you're fighting even more, but you realize I've gotten stronger. I've only been walking with the Lord a year or two, and I can see how God has allowed me now to be around unsaved people and still keep my Christian principles. And it don't work every day. Listen, when people start acting like they can go to work and be like they are at church, they're lying. Yeah. Go, go, go where they work. I've been to places, doctors, uh, doctors' appointments when there's people there that are Christian, and you go, wow, they act different at work. You bet. Uh -huh. You bet they do. Not supposed to, but they do. Yeah. You know why? They're around everybody who's lost. Yeah. You think they're really going to go in there and, how's this? People who work with me, guess what I talk about a lot? God. I sing, I was so much, do all yeah. kinds of things like that. God forbid you get in a conversation with me and don't know what you're talking about. Right. You're in trouble. Especially if you want to try to talk about spiritual things. Right. But we're in the world. Are you just getting along with everybody? Or you have a victory? Are you known as the Christian at the office? Or are you just one of the boys? Right. You want to know one of the things I've watched happen with Miss Carissa? She's not one of the girls. She's not one of the gang. 
than when I told her, join the club. You don't get to be a leader among men yeah. and then go hang around with them in their den. Oh, I like that. I'm a poet and didn't even know it. But you don't get to. Know when I learned that, Pastor? Back about 30 years ago, when my mentor said to me, I know it's a picnic for everybody else. And I'm over there wanting to play basketball with TC and everybody. But you're working. And away I go. See? You know why? You got a job to do. And your job where you work is to be a Christian. My job at the picnic is to be me still. Because this is how I'm supposed to be all the time. Yeah. Not one way one place and another somewhere else. Right. The young man is able to go, to go to work and be a Christian. Mm -hmm. They say you can't have your Bible out. Amen. Don't bring it out. Right. They can't stop you in here. Amen. You get a half hour by law. They can't stop you from reading your Bible during your half hour. Amen. You get 15 minutes in the morning. You get 15 minutes in the afternoon. That's one hour out of every eight hours that you can take to get back to God. Right there in your time where everyone goes, that person's a Christian. Yeah. How do I know? They read their Bible and pray. You go, oh, you don't go stop at the bar with all the workers. You got these guys roofing for you. You and the pastor don't go down to the bar with them and pay them down at the bar. No, if I was going to do that, I'd own the bar. Right. You better figure out. You babe that work. Because if you're a babe in the world, you know what happens? You're out there with no hope. Yeah. Nobody can come to you and go, I know you're in trouble. I know that you're probably hungry. I know that you're probably thirsty. I know that you're just a baby in Christ. You know what happens when you try to do that? The baby says, get away from me, I'm fine. Right. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah. Right? That's just the way it is. See, if we just understand, you know, I don't get mad at somebody go, well, man, I didn't come to church. I wonder if they're gonna be mad. You think I'm gonna be mad at a baby for not making it to church? You think I'm going to take for a moment and think somebody growing in grace who's never been to church and decided to get in what we like to call hard and come to every single service and involve themselves in everything? Do I not know that in time the testing will come? No! I expect the testing to come. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. And I'm going to see how it plays out. And know what the Bible says? They, they went out from among us because they weren't of us. Right. You know what the Bible says? My sheep know my voice. See the difference? That's how God builds his church. Yeah. Not by preachers laying guilt trips on people and not allowing them to see the necessity of the local gathering. Or is it a lie? Let me tell you something. If I didn't have somewhere to come to worship God on Sunday, I don't mean to talk. I mean to come with other believers. I don't know what I'd do. Right, I don't think I'd make it very long. You know? I live for this. Yeah. All week long, all I think about is how I can't wait for Wednesday. And then when Wednesday's over, I'm talking about Friday. Because come Friday, guess what? I tell him, I don't talk about work. I start talking now about all that yeah. other stuff. We made our money to keep things going. Now let's talk about the spirit. Yeah. So the young man, Pastor, he's able to say no. He gets some victory. What about the next one? Watch the father. Same verse. I write on you fathers. Why? Because you have known him. That's from the beginning. Think about that one. You want to know where you are? If you're a father, you know what you do, what you have to offer? You actually know the invisible God. If you're a young man, know what you've got? The ability to defeat the wicked one and say no to sin and continue on. Are you with me? So figure out where you are. Are you a father? Are you a young man? Are you little children? Are you a little child? Are you a baby? And then begin to grow. The last one on there is an elder. And you know what that elder is? Or aged, I'm sorry, aged. You see that in Philemon? Yes, yeah, an old person. That's an old saint of God. In Philemon, only has one chapter, verse number nine, you're going to find that Paul calls himself the aged. Why? Because he's old. He, let me tell you something about the aged. I'm glad God just gave this to me to remind everybody. Here's the thing about the aged. He been a babe and knows it. He been a little child and knows it. He was a teenager in Christ and knows it. He knows as a young man victory. He also knows what it was like to be a father and be used of God to reveal who God the Father was to all of the people. And now he's become aged. And guess what? He's fine with sitting back. 
And he's been through all of it. And he's the one watching. The one who will give warning. The one who will say, watch it. This is going to come up. That one over there, they could. Are you with me? Yeah. Do you see how it goes on forever? So the pastor's the babe in Christ. And the people in the church are under the babe in Christ. And he's never given them any meat. And they bring in the worldly music, and they get my disco light going, JJ, like from the old days. We get the disco <laughs> light going, we got the worship music going, we got all of that going, and then we wonder why the people are carnal. Right. They're starving right. to death. Exactly. Yeah. They're starving to death. They don't know why God was allowing the Israelites to kill the Amalekites, the Girgashites, the Hivites. They don't know that there were giants in the Bible talked about. They don't know that there were angelic beings that came down, cohabitated with women. And when you talk about it, they leave your church. Do you know why? Babes in Christ. Yeah. So, how do I want to leave this with you? I want you to figure out where you're at. I can tell you this. I'm not aged yet. <laughs> I think I got a little bit of the father in me in the sense that I do know who God is. Yeah. I do. I know him. Yeah. I know him, son. Intimately. See, wonder why? I'm all alone. Unlike you that have mates and other people, when I leave all of you guys, I am all by myself from human contact. The only contact I have after that is spiritual contact with an invisible God who speaks through a Bible, a book that I hold in my hand. What a thing. You go, what's it been like? How? Well, let me tell you something. For the last, oh, wow, about 20 years or so, I've been a single guy. Let me tell you something about that. When you're married to the Lord and you get to know him intimately, like a husband and wife get to know each other intimately. I, I mean, Pastor, you've been with Mrs. for a while now. You know what she likes and doesn't like. I went through it, you guys. I know what she likes and doesn't like. I know she don't like a mess. I know she don't like stuff put, not put back there for long. I know a lot about it. And she ain't my wife. Well, guess what happened? You know what happened? When you get with God and you begin to grow, you get to know what he likes and what he dislikes. You know what he hates? Discord among the brethren. Yeah. Hates it. Yeah. That's why I will never, ever allow this place to end up having any of us have animosity with each other. There's no place for it. Life's yeah. too short. Amen. Amen. Now, those little principles right there, and this little 45 minutes I gave you right here, if you don't figure out where you fit, like if you haven't figured out yet that, you know, uh, uh, how to get your sins squared away, if we, confess, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we say that we've not sinned, we call him a liar and the truth is not in us. So in other words, the old man is still going to sin. Even though Jesus Christ lives inside of you, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, you still will sin. Right. So you know how to deal with that. Right. If you just, you ready? If I just get mad at Pastor, Pastor and I have an argument at work and I never fix it. And then we come in here and we do our little thing like that. Do you see how that builds and builds and you're never affixing nothing? You've got to fix things with God. Yeah. If you don't learn that, you don't grow on. You'll never have a victory over your sin until you realize how to take care of your sin. You won't beat it in your flesh. Right. You need spiritual help. Yeah. We need him. We need him. It's all about him. We can fall. And we will fall. Yeah, that's right. All of that stuff. Everything we've all dealt with. Amen. Get back up. Amen. And there's the key. Right there. That's how you know you've grown. When you begin to just go, there, there, listen, there's no way to go. I know. I tried. You know. You were with me. As a matter of fact, as soon as I decided, she was right behind me. You learn pretty quick when you're a leader what happens. You'll go where you go. I think I went to Florida. My sister was down there. I got the floor one went short before a bunch of us went down there. Right. We started a church. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Then we came back up here. Guess what happened? We started going to church and know what we realized? We got to start our own church. Yeah. Because yeah. ain't nobody believes like we believe. Yeah. We are the old school Anabaptists believing yeah. every word in the book. Amen. So where are you at? How's this? The pastor. He can't be obeyed, and he's not. He's been with me eight years, been saved for how many now? 16, 18 years. 16 years in his life, right? Well, here's the thing. He's not a babe. He's not a, he's not a father yet. You know what he is? He's a young man. Are you okay with that? So in other words, he's learning to have victories. 
If you knew him two years ago at the church when he didn't hold the services and he was still a little bit standoffish and really didn't want to mix it up with anybody, you would look now and go, wow, did God go wrong? And if you knew him as a young man and how little he would talk, you would go, wow, has things changed. Yeah. So what happened? Growth. Where did it start for him? Hard spot. 13 years old at a Christian camp, everybody almost is saved. He's brought up in a Christian home, got a pastor and a preacher for a father, uncle's a preacher, and living with preachers, living with the, all kinds of stuff. And he, at that moment, made a decision. Uh-oh, I'm not born again. And he slipped that hand up. And he had to make that next step to go, wow, even though I know all these verses, I'm a baby Christ. Right. You see how he didn't get to skip it? Still got to go through it. Still got to go through it. Our problem is we don't want to be a baby, and that's good, but you still got to experience what a baby is so you'll know you've been a baby. Right. I could tell you when I was a baby in Christ, that year that I came home from prison and had nobody guiding me, and I'm up there smoking cocaine and partying with the bikers and riding a motorcycle down Grafton Street in, in January with no shirt on, knocking on my sister's door, you know, and she's got a lady door, you know, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't, I need God. Riding around, I need God. Just the baby Christ at that. We got men that walk around going, I got saved 25 years ago and became a preacher 25 years ago. Really? You never grew at all? You just went from there to there? I don't know about that. I think everybody grows. Everybody. Listen, I got saved in 84. It was two years before I got preaching and doing anything. And then it was another till 88 before I got saved. It was, I mean, before, before I got ordained. You see, it's three years before I got ordained. Takes time. Takes time. Growth. Growth. All right. So figure out where you are. And then, you know what? Try to get to become a young man in Christ. Yeah. Or young woman. When you can begin to have victories. When you go, I beat that thing. I, I had a bad attitude about something. I had a, a broken heart over something. You know the real issues usually stem with your mother and your father. That's not a, uh, a psychological uh, lie. That's true. If you were brought up with somebody giving you love and affection, usually you have love and affection. All right? It's just true. So if you find out that maybe your parents didn't do things right, well, maybe you should learn from it instead of going, well, no, break free from your own way. Amen. But uh, I can tell you have enough of that. Amen. Lord, I love you. I thank you for all things. I pray, Lord, now that you bless the next service. Bless the pastor as he presents the word of God. Lord, give him power. I'm sure from on high. And then, Lord, give all of us hearers uh, that ability to hear and then leave with the truth, Lord, and then walk strongly, Lord. We never want to ever have anyone leave defeated, Lord. I want these men and women and children to leave here feeling like they're, they're soldiers, Lord, that they're sons, that they matter, Lord, and, and help them, Lord, to understand how much that I love them, Lord. And maybe, Lord, the way I do things, they don't think I love them, but, Lord, let them know. Only you can let them know, because I surely can. You can. Let each one know in this room today that I love and care about them and desire for them to have victory over everything that's holding them back from serving God 100%. I love you. Pray for those that are sick today, Lord. I pray for my brother Tony, and I love him, Lord. And think about two, three years ago how sick he was, Lord, and how he felt. We thought, Lord, we might even lose him, Lord, back then. So I pray for him, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that the burden of the world that's on that man's shoulders, Lord, that you somehow would relieve him of that. Just give him peace, God, and touch him. Let him know, even right now, Lord, that we love him and that we uh, care about him, Lord, and think about him. Pray for all those, Lord, that couldn't be here today. Pray for Rhonda. Pray that you touch her, Lord. Touch her body. I know she's had some problems with her teeth, Lord. I pray you uh, take that pain away. I think of that uh, our pastor friend, Brother uh, Benson, Lord, and that neck operation he had, Lord. And boy, God, his neck was open from end to end. Oh, Lord, God, touch that preacher. Lord, to think he stood in our midst in that kind of pain, I ask you to touch that man today. And bless him, Lord, and let him know that we're thinking about him. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Benson had a huge surgery. If you've seen the uh, thing, it went from here all the way down uh, about eight, nine yeah, inches. Was your last from there. That was Brother Benson who preached. And, um, oh, I didn't oh, know if his neck was fused that whole time. Yeah. No, that is not the What is it, like the vertebrae were messed up? Yeah, they were fused, I guess. But they had the 